What is up, heroes? This is Minite Zero. Welcome back to Let's Play Celeste Blind. In the last episode, we completed chapters 5 and 6. They're seasides, that is. And in this episode, we're going to hopefully beat this chapter 7 and 8. Um, if they follow the formula up until this point, we might have enough time to do so, which would be crazy and would definitely defy my expectations for how long the seasides would take. But the seasides have been really fun so far. Um, they actually might be one of my favorite parts of the game so far. The story, the themes, etc. have been incredible. The, the art style has been incredible. The you know soundtrack has been great. But in terms of sheer level design and ch the mix of challenge with uh, duration of gameplay, um, I think the seasides are definitely a highlight. But regardless, that's enough chit-chatting. Let's hop into Chapter 7's Seaside. And whoa, they're just going to start me right off with the really long room. Wouldn't be surprised, actually. It would be very fitting for the summit. And we finally have two dashes back. All right, so let's see what we got here. <laughs> Gotta love that sound effect. Wow, so there is a lot going on here. Is there... Oh, and then that's going to take us up to the next portion. Okay. So we're going to have to utilize both of our dashes, and we're going to have to use those wall bounces very effectively, it seems. So I'll need to jump off, dash up... Wall bounce, dash up, wall bounce, regain my dash, dash up, wall bounce, over, dash, regain, dash, dash up, wall bounce, dash up, wall bounce, regain, dash, dash, wall bounce, dash, wall bounce, regain, dash, fall to the right, dash, dash, and make there. So a lot of a lot of wall bounces is what I'm seeing. <laughs> Fails to complete one of them. At least it wasn't like an instant death, like a lot of the levels. Gotta get that timing down. Oops. That's not gonna do. Although, I realized I could have just waited for the crystal to come back and give it another go. Also, it's interesting that, um, wow, that really didn't... Darn. I was gonna say how, despite my mistakes, I'm not dying for a lot of them, which is, which seems to be very atypical for this game. Oh no, too early. I have to get used to the reduced falling time. Oh man, I got the jump. I got the bounce. Yeah, the, the reduced falling time because of the the wind. Come on. Nice. So that's the first room. Now the wind is going downward. And I don't have a chance to look at what's coming up ahead. Interesting. Where, where am I? Oh! I see. That's a pretty cool game. Come on. Okay, that's the second room. Now it seems the formula has been met. It seems we have some killer sounds tracks playing in the background, but we've made it to the final long room. And a long room is it indeed. <laughs> it's still going, it's still going. Oh my word. And what? There's not even a crystal heart there. Oh, I probably need to go to the right, but wow, okay. <clears throat> so maybe this isn't even the end. Let's plan, because we're going to be doing a lot of bouncing. So I got to jump on this. Of course, it starts with a pink cloud, my favorite. And I can probably afford to dash to the right, fall, dash to the left onto the spring, and then dash up, fade over, dash to the right, bounce, dash up, up, fade, or like, um, drift, then bounce, and then up left, up, and then bounce, fall, yeah, fall and drift through that little narrow gap, then to the right and up, bounce, and then potentially... I don't know what the trajectory is going to be 100%, but probably straight up and then up left. Bounce off that. Drift down. Dash right. 
dash right cloud, get the jump right up to there, spring, and then dash to the right, and then dash up, wall bounce, regain dash, and then, wow. Um, what's the best way to do this part? So I get my dash back here. I'm gonna land on this pink cloud. I feel like it'd be a really tight fit. <laughs> like, really tight, I'm talking. To make the jump through that little cavity on the right, that little tunnel on the right, and then over and dash to make my way to that spring. The other, only other thing I'm thinking is if I land on the pink cloud, I can jump to the right, dash through that little gap, and then straight up. And I think that might be the way I want to do this. Bounce to the right, dash right, that top area is covered for some reason, but fall down, dash the right, dash the right, dash up, dash up, dash the right, drift, regain dash, dash right, dash up right, drift without dying, dash right, dash up right, drift up right, up left, up right, drift down, drift right, wall climb, wall cling, and then climb. Holy cow, is this going to be a tough one. <laughs> and I die on the initial uh, obstacle. I can afford to go up right there, I think. But honestly, the springs in general I find pretty fun, so I'm thinking... This might be one of those segments I generally find more enjoyable. Oh man, felt like we were actually moving pretty quickly through there. Hmm. Nah, I did not do that early enough to have enough room to work with. All right. I'm gonna have to deal with my worst enemy though. The pink clouds. Nah, they're like second worst enemy. Worst enemy is definitely golden feathers. Oh, that's a it's a narrow corridor. We're dealing it though, we're dealing with it. Surprisingly we don't have wind to deal with. I was expecting a lot of wind mechanics, just because the first two rooms had wind. But, sure enough, the wind has calmed down here. Not that I'm complaining, honestly. Oh, really? The wind, while it does add some cool possibilities with the platforming, given that it's not the gravity you work with, for like 90% of the game, I, I'm not exactly missing it, right? When you have like some of the most intense platforming challenges, I feel like it should be working under a lot of the systems you've learned to operate within well up until this point, while adding, I guess, more difficult twists to those, rather than introducing newer mechanics or just less familiar mechanics. Oh man, almost. After initially doing really well, we are struggling a little bit now. But I think something I need to pay a lot of attention to is the height at which I hit the springs. I think that will... Well, first I need to make sure I hit the spring. Um, but that will make a big difference in terms of having enough height to, to drift at certain parts. Like this one, for example. Or even, you know, this very first one. If I don't get enough height, right? If I hit that spring too low, it's just not even gonna happen. Like, see how much nicer that was there? Okay. Oh man, the pink cloud strikes again. But that was the furthest we made it, so 
I am I am happy with that progress. Of course, beautiful scenery in the background. It always makes me happy when I see games, you know, more modern games that have this aesthetic, right? This pixelated aesthetic that truly make it, you know, or highlight how it can be art. A lot of people say like, oh, the graphics are bad about, you know, a lot of old games. But it's games like this that really emphasize how something, even if the resolution, right, isn't like the most smooth or you can still see pixels, that you can still have something artistic and that there's still a lot of room for creative people to work with in this medium. And how, aside from just not just being a limitation of an older era, it was in and of itself a style, right? Okay, I gotta focus. Oh man, almost again! I need to be really on the right edge of that pink cloud, and I need to make sure my momentum is moving to the right there. That's definitely gonna be a tough part. That that second pink cloud because I really don't have a lot of space to work with. So I think that the trick is going to be making sure I'm, you know, utilizing all of the jump, but then obviously I need to be moving to the right as I do that. I'll get the most yield out of it. We got to make it there though. <laughs> Talking about all the strategy for a part that I haven't gotten back to yet. Darn. That time I made a little bit more of an effort to, or a more conscientious, or more conscious effort to fade to the right there so I didn't hit that wall that's been giving me a difficult time and I overcompensated. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I shied away from the, the spring. I was already holding the controller, the D-pad, in anticipation of already having hit the spring, knowing what momentum I wanted to give Madeline as she's flying through the air. Wow, that's, I think, the first time I've done that. We'll make it. We'll make it. Eventually. This level won't be uh, so kind as to give us a checkpoint though, unfortunately. No, I missed the wall bounce, guys! I got past the cloud! I got past the second pink cloud and I was like, oh, I can do this part. I can do this. This is, th these are wall bounces. I've got this. I did not do the uh, the wall bounces correctly. Darn, that is disappointing. Because I feel like that's one of those segments where I'm like, okay, this type of platforming I can I can react to. I feel a little bit more comfortable with. But alas. Mm, darn it. There's the pink cloud striking again. <clears throat> oh, I thought I actually was gonna hit the spikes there, so I was not prepared for, well, successfully hitting the spring. And so far, it seems like this might be the first time we're not able to complete two seasides in an episode. <laughs> We are definitely taking quite some time here. And we've still got a long way to go. Ah, gotta keep moving to the right. Keep moving to the right. I always like reactively dash back to the left for stability, you know? Why did I do that? I was already set up. I was already lined up. 
think that's the first time I've died that way. And that one was... So normally I'm trying to, you know, land high up on these springs so that I get a lot of height and I can drift further. And that one I need to be careful not to be too high up on the spring when I hit it, because then I'll just bounce right into the spikes. Obviously that's not very helpful. That was too far to the left. Wow. I thought I died there. I did not think I actually hit the spring. So I was not prepared. I mean, I should always just play as if I'm going to hit the spring. I shouldn't just immediately stop as soon as I die. I should always assume, like, something might work out and I might still have the opportunity to continue. Oh, and there I... I didn't hit the spring. But sometimes it's a little bit hard to do that when... Normally, you know, the little breaks when you do... die... probably serve as little sanity checks. Oh, I didn't even dash back there, but I'd probably probably waited a little bit too long or, or something. I mean, I definitely didn't do it as intended or, or perfectly because I, you know, didn't really make it through. I think I'm waiting too long. I think I'm getting flung with too high of a velocity. And that's just sending me right into the spikes. But I need to go a little bit earlier so that I don't have that much momentum and can afford to move more to the right. So I think that's what I'm going to try this time. Or at least I'm going to try to pay more attention to that, is jumping off of that platform a little bit more quickly. Really? Why am I having a difficult part with this now? It's probably just me getting impatient. That is definitely my vice when it comes to platformers, is getting impatient and frustrated with having to redo so many parts of the level over and over. It's like I understand that that's, you know, somewhat inherent to the to platforming genre, right? It's mastering earlier obstacles so that you have the opportunity to work on, you know, skills and, and obstacles later on in the level and you only clear the level when you've successfully mastered all of it such that you can do all of it in one go um, because obviously this level would not be as difficult if I could save state for example after certain segments and I just had to do each obstacle once platformers in general you know really have to strike that balance of Okay, it's not difficult to do a lot of really small things one at a time without having to worry about them again. And it's really impressive and challenging to do a series of things in a row without messing up. Um, but obviously that also comes with a downside, right? It can be incredibly tedious or frustrating to have to repeat the same parts of the level, especially if they become really easy, in order to even have the chance to practice something later on in the level. All right, well, that kind of works. Oh, and that's not gonna work. Oh no, that's not gonna work, guys. We're not gonna be able to just jump through that platform. We're gonna have to use the third pink cloud. Well, that's at least the farthest we've made it, so happy with that progress. the frustration of not having the opportunity to really get good at the parts that are giving you the most difficulty because you have to spend time going through the same things that have become easy over and over. That's probably what frustrates me the most about the platforming genre. If that wasn't apparent from my tirades 
<laughs> during the strawberry collecting earlier in the Let's Play. But I, I sense that frustration will play a role in this level. But we will see. Because I can already feel it getting to me. <laughs> Gotta jump earlier. The thing is, what worked last time is that I didn't actually even get that much momentum out of the pink cloud, but because it restores my my double dash, I can actually just make my way up to the spring using that, and um, I don't even need to worry so much about getting a lot of height from the pink cloud. And that way, I reduce the risk of actually, you know, flinging myself into the spikes. pause real quick and let's analyze so we're about to land on this pink cloud and it's pretty clear we're just looking at the level design right look at the shape of the spikes and everything my intended route through this is to land on this pink cloud get some amount of upward momentum not too much but some and I need to go to the right around this spike platform immediately above me obviously without hitting the spikes above me I think what I need to do is try to get as much momentum as possible, but I'm gonna need to dash, right? I'm not gonna be able to ride the momentum all the way out, otherwise I'll hit those spikes. So I think I'm gonna need to dash the up left and then dash to the up right and fade onto that spring. That's the impression I'm getting. So let's, let's try that. Wow. <laughs> that actually wasn't too bad for a first attempt. I guess I expected to get a lot more momentum out of the pink cloud there. So we'll need to feel that out as we uh, hopefully make it there a little bit more frequently. <laughs> but that's the idea. Alright, let's do it. I need to go straight up. So the momentum I'm actually getting is not a whole lot. So I think what I need to do is go straight up and then upright if I want to actually clear that that blue spike area on the top. So we'll, we'll try that next. Give it a go. Almost. Almost. I messed up my my D-pad. At the very least, now that we're not really trying to deal with the momentum of the second pink cloud, it's not as formidable of an obstacle. It's a little bit more in our control. Which is really nice, actually. <laughs> No! Messed up the wall bounce. Slowly but surely, I think we're coming to understand the level, guys. Slowly but surely. That's really low. Okay. No! A lot of times I find myself, like, dashing early. I think it's just because I'm getting impatient. And I want to, I want to do parts of the level faster. But obviously, there are limitations on how fast you can actually go through certain parts of the level. Okay. There we go. Alright. So I'm going to need to dash to the right 
drop, and then dash to the right, and then it's a whole dash game. Oh, I was too fast! I was too early! But yeah, that's a whole, like, dashing segment. So it's gonna be a lot of reaction the first time. Let's briefly take a look at it again, just to refresh. So when I do reach this segment, it's going to be dash to the right, fall, dash to the right, dash to the right, dash up, and then dash up, and then dash up right or to the right, fall, get that, dash to the right, up right, right, up right, up right, up left, up right, right. Okay. We're pretty close. We're pretty close. I think that segment will be easier than the rest of this famous last words but that's the impression I I get just based on I don't know all the platforming we've done up until this point and I think what I feel a little bit more comfortable with so we'll see if that actually pans out or if those are just big words <laughs> almost almost Man, they really, if you land on that cloud and you don't get the full bounce, you're going nowhere. <laughs> For those of you that didn't see, I, this is the first time I, I landed on the cloud, but I jumped way too early, way too early. And so it disappeared and I tried to stall using both of my dashes to uh, no avail for it to respawn. And even when I, you know, the death animation was still going, it hadn't started respawning yet so it really is a, a one-time bounce okay dash time oh come on did I not hit up fast enough? Must have been the case. That's a bummer. I mean, as to be expected, we are at least getting somewhat more consistent with this opening part. If anything, I feel like my deaths at this point are more so just from getting impatient slash lazy. No! Wall bounce! Wall bounce! As always, we've got some nice music to listen to, which makes things better. I don't know why, but I was looking at the snow falling. <laughs> For some reason, for like one of the first times, I got distracted by the snow falling. I'm excited. Whenever I complete a game, I pretty much listen to the entire soundtrack. Like, I'll just go on YouTube and look up the entire soundtrack and spend, you know, the next day just listening to that. And this game has an incredible soundtrack. Alright, dash time. Oh man, I didn't... I went straight up instead of upright at that segment. But, yeah, that's, that's something I love to do. And so, this game has been incredible. You know, part of why I wait until afterwards most of the time is just I don't want to hear a soundtrack I haven't heard yet, so that it's part of my experience of the game itself, right? Just going into a game completely blind. And I'm afraid of running into, I don't know, some some 
hype boss music or something like that before I've actually run into it into the game. And then I fear that it'll lose some of its impact. And I'd rather experience it in the game for the first time. And while Celeste doesn't have boss music per se, I mean it does have like, I guess at least at least one boss moment I can think of. It's definitely true that the music contributes to each atmosphere, each environment. And so experiencing that with the environment makes a big difference compared to just listening to it outside of that context. Wow. Okay, so I think if slash when we hopefully clear this, uh, we won't be attempting Chapter 8's B-side <laughs> this episode. <laughs> Oh man, I need to stop getting impatient. Because we've been at this one for a little bit. And I am admittedly getting a little bit fatigued because I was doing the previous episode just immediately before this. There's no time in between. So. It's getting pretty late, and my my eyes are getting fatigued. But we'll do what we can. We're really close. We've made it to that dash segment a few times now, but now <laughs> I'm dying so much on the beginning of the level. Okay. Focus. Okay, dash time. I knew I was too far to the right. I felt I had to go upright. I couldn't just afford to go straight up, but I knew I was way too close to the right there. Why did I... Why was I drifting all over the place there? I don't normally need to do that. We just barely made that spring. No! Why didn't I jump earlier? I think that was like muscle memory. Just like clouds. Oh yeah, that's right. I should try to, you know, get a big boost out of them. Not that one. Not that one, Nick. Okay. It's crazy. This game requires so much precision. You really need to be consistent with, you know, getting your, your spacing within a certain really small margin of error every time. I mean, that's part of what makes it great. I did it again! I think I need to be more patient there. I think I'm rushing that, and I need to let myself fall a little bit more. I just want to get back to that dash segment. Okay. Alright, here we go. No! <laughs> back left for some reason
I would be very upset <laughs> if I have to call it quits on this level before I go to sleep. After feeling like I've made so much progress. Oh man, I thought I could salvage it. But there's no doubt I'm making silly mistakes now, which is never a good sign. Like stupid stuff like that. <laughs> I think that's like the first time I've died that way. By going up right there instead of the proper direction. I really gotta focus. This is starting to get sloppy and impatient, and frustrated, and that's certainly not going to help me play any better. the same like farthest point I've gotten before but instead of going upright I went straight up New record. Something I realize is I can afford to go straight up there and fade into that crystal. Here we go again. disheartening to see the finish line and trip not just trip face plant <sighs> I can do it Anything that reassures me of that. I can do this. 100%. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, don't die. Oh. 
That didn't go as planned, but we did it. Wow, there's a really beautiful Sakura tree and the old lady. It's hard to believe that it's over, isn't it? Funny how we get attached to the struggle. <laughs> what a profound statement. <laughs> what a short but so profound statement. Getting attached to the struggle, right? Enjoying the climb, enjoying the improvement, enjoying facing the adversity, and enjoying overcoming it. Not even necessarily the end state. Promise me that you'll take care of yourself, okay? Okay, look at this beautiful, look at this beautiful scenery. Okay, I have two dashes. Don't screw it up, Nick. Whew. And with that, we have completed chapter seven, the summits, seaside. In what was most definitely the most difficult seaside up until this point, in my opinion. Wow. So yet again, for the third time, we are greeted with this beautiful scenery. Okay. And with that, there's chapter eight, which still has a seaside. And then, oh boy, then we got chapter nine, which I am so looking forward to. Also, wow, how the soundtrack changed. Incredible. Let me know if the ending changes based on how many crystal hearts you've had, or like the seaside or anything like that, if there are any other alternate endings aside from the strawberries. I'd be curious to hear that, but hope you guys enjoyed that one. All the ups, all the downs, because oh man, were there downs. But regardless, we are we're cruising along. Cruising along, it's funny, you know. This seaside, I had 151 deaths which felt like so much um, comparatively to the other seasides, right? Where yeah, I was finishing them in 15, 20 minutes. This one took me over half an hour. I had 151 deaths, but the B-side alone, I had almost 400 deaths. In the regular, you know, chapter, I had over 600 deaths. Similarly, you know, this B-side, I had 400 deaths. So it's funny how my standards for my own self have increased over time throughout the game. Um, and I think that's pretty typical, pretty natural for a platformer but anyways that's that's enough chit-chatting for me i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i hope you guys are looking forward to chapter eight the cores seaside in the next episode but until the next episode this is Moon Knight zero and this mission is complete <laughs>